and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith and Victory Church. So glad to have you tonight. I uh, just want to remind you this one important factor. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. He reigns supreme as the triumphant King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Resurrected from the dead, the Alpha, the Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end. Praise God. So glad to have you joining us tonight. Just kind of get my Facebook out there, letting people know we're on. Um, and and that sometimes I can't do that. And it, it happens after uh, we actually get on live. So I'm um, getting that out there. <clears throat> so glad you could join us. And I uh, look forward to our time together tonight. Hallelujah. We are uh, ministering on the subject of faith foundations. Last week we talked about the difference between faith and hope. And if you remember, uh, hope was the starter. Faith is the finisher. Like in a relay race, um, hope never finishes and faith never starts. Hope is a starter. F hope takes the baton from f faith takes the baton from hope and finishes the race. Hallelujah, glory to God. It's it's the one that brings it down the home stretch. Praise God. But without the without hope being in the starter blocks, you won't get faith to cross the finish line. Hallelujah, and uh, you'll have to go back and listen to last week if you want to get uh, all of that. Praise God. So. Um, we're going to move on tonight from faith and hope and uh, move into uh, faith sees the answer. Faith sees the answer. Whereas hope is in the future, hope is looking for it to come. Faith says that it possesses it now. Remember Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Praise God. So look with me, if you will, to the 20th uh, verse of the fourth chapter of the book of Proverbs, <clears throat> or more accurately, the um, fourth proverb in verse 20. And we'll read verses 20 through 22. And it says here, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Give attention to. You know, not just casually listen or um, as we see our kids in the schools do uh, teachers teaching and they're on the phone uh, texting and watching a YouTube video and teacher says are you listening yeah I'm listening what did I say um, um, you know that's not that's not attentiveness that's not attending to that's not inclining uh, in other words to incline your ear to attend to the words to incline your ear is to give your full attention to the Word of God amen let them not depart from thine eyes, for they are um, life to those who find them, and health or medicine to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Glory to God. So, in order for faith to see the answer, we must keep the word of God before us, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah, faith is, you know, as we've said before in the past, teaching on faith, faith is a thermostat of our lives. We will rise to the, to the we will, we will uh, acclimate to the temperature of the thermostat. We will acclimate to the temperature of our faith or to the setting of our faith. Praise God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. James, the Lord's uh, natural half-brother, uh, Mary being his mother also. Glory to God. He says in James chapter 1 verse. Well, we better look at verse 21 because this is good. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. And receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save, save your souls. Remember. As our teaching we've done in the past on, on the word save, sozo, um, means to spiritually have a person born again, save, salvation for the spirit. It also covers wholeness, restoration, uh, restoring the soul, a deliverance from evils, healing of the body. Uh, in this case, it says save your soul, uh, sozo, or make sound your suke, your soul, your mind, your will, your intellect. Your emotions. Notice he he, pre, he prefaces that with lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. 
Go back to the very first of this chapter. He's talking to believers. So, sin, naughtiness, um, filthiness are deterrents in our lives to the things of God, to receiving. He says, lay those aside and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to <clears throat> make your soul sound. Hallelujah. And then he goes on and says this. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man, uh, uh, like an unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass, and behold, he go, uh, he beholdeth himself and goeth his way in straight manner, straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. <clears throat> and continueth therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man <coughs> shall be blessed in his deed. Hallelujah. So notice here it tells us that if we're just hearing the word and not doing it, see we, there's, a, there's a lot of narratives that we get in the body of Christ. Overemphasis of things. In other words, emphasizing something to a degree that we push it into a place out of proper perspective with the rest of the Word of God. Not compromising, okay? You know, uh, one of the things we like to say about, you know, the, during the Word of Faith, highlight of the Word of Faith movement or revival or however you want to term that era was, you know, we have the uncompromised Word of Faith. Well, true. Absolutely. The word of faith, the word of God. But you know, we have the word uncompromised word of grace. We have the uncompromised word of sanctification. We have the uncompromised word of holiness. God's word is, to, is not to be compromised in any arena. Amen. And I'm a faith person. And I grew up with classical Pentecostal, came on among, among the word of faith charismatics. Hallelujah. Um, and, you know, I, I, I found out that if you'll do what the Bible says, you'll be in all those things. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, but he says to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And one of the things we did is, is we, it was, we so emphasized <coughs> that when you've entered into faith, you've entered into rest, that we started kick back our heels and didn't do anything. I'm in faith. I rest. I don't do anything. And, and, and the element of truth there that is truth was misconstrued to mean something it didn't. See, entering into the rest with God doesn't mean you don't do anything. It means you <coughs> you cease from human efforts to make what God said come to pass come to pass. In other words, you're trying to um, save yourself by doing the law. If I keep the law, I'll get saved. Well, see, that's but when you've entered into faith and salvation, you cease from trying to save yourself and you trust in the redemptive work of Christ. Yet, you created in Christ unto good works. There should be things that follow your lifestyle <coughs> that represent that inner work in your life by the Lord. Hallelujah. Doesn't mean you sit down there under grace and do whatever you want to do because I'm under grace. I've ceased from my efforts. So I don't need to do anything except live however I want to live because grace takes care of the rest. Well, that's the extreme push of a narrative. It's, an, it's, it's a narrative outside of the parameters of the whole counsel of the word of God. Okay. Um, you know, the Bible talk, he, here he says, lay aside all naughtiness and super, uh, filthiness of, um, of not, uh, all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word. <clears throat> so, to be a doer of the word is to do what the word says. Hello? Now, who, here's a question. When the, the Bible tells, the Bible says to put on a new man. But read that whole thing. Who, who's to put on the new man? And who is to put off the old man? Now, to hear some in their narratives 
of I've entered into rest means God does the way with the old man and God puts in the new man and you don't have. No, we are to put on the new man. Bible makes it very clear and put off the old man. The Bible tells us not tells us not to yield our members <coughs> as service of unrighteousness. It didn't say it did not say that grace will do it for you. It did not say that if you get into the faith of salvation, that your members will automatically cease to want to sin and no longer sin. It says for you, the believer who have faith in Christ, who are born again, you are to not yield your members as servants of unrighteousness, <coughs> but as servants of righteousness. You are to use them as servants of righteousness. And so there are aspects, there are things that you must do. My goodness. <coughs> I was I get this tickle. I got to start talking about this tickle. Hallelujah. Stop it. So we have to keep the word. Say amen. Or else the Bible would not say be doers of the word. Not just a scripture. You know, Hebrews chapter, I believe, 10, where it says they have entered into faith, have entered into rest. Uh, I believe, you know, great scripture. But you're resting from the human works and really of the law. When, now, when you read Paul's writings... Jesse, can you get me that? <clears throat> when you read Paul's writings, and he talks about works, and he, I mean, he lamb blasts, you know, uh, doing anything by works, this kind of thing, over and over and over, and over again. Um, and then James comes back and goes, show me your faith without your works, I'll show you my faith by my works. Um, they are not opposed to each other in thought. Paul is making a reference to the works of the law. You don't achieve salvation by going to the priest and offering a turtle dove. You don't achieve salvation by not walking more than X number of feet on a Sunday, on the Sabbath. You don't obtain um, healing by going and showing yourself to the priest under the new covenant. Those are the works of the law. However, James says that if a brother comes to you naked and destitute and asks you for clothing or food and you say, go away, be filled, uh, your, your faith means nothing. You show me your faith without works, I'll show you my faith by my works. So there are acts, and really one translation actually says it this way, um, by corresponding action. Amen. Be doers of the word. Let your actions correspond with your faith. Doesn't mean you sit down and do nothing. Hello? Amen. You know, I believe God prospers me. Yes. Well, the Bible says the hand of the diligent prospereth. Amen. That he blesses the work of your hands. See, there's, there's things involved. We just can't leave out Bible to fit a strict narrative that people have preached off of one verse, misinterpreting its meaning and presenting it in a way that really puts people into captivity and bondage to a narrative rather than truth. Hello. So it's important that we follow the word of God, that we do the whole word of God, Amen. Now, you may not like it, but it's true. Amen. It's, it's lovely, it's lovely truth. And glory to God. <clears throat> Jesse, there's something going on with the my mind keeps clicking in and out and freezing and, and sputtering. Okay. I don't know if anybody else is out there doing stuff. If if it is, let us know. I'm I'm, I'm monitoring and it looks like we're just we're glitching here. Um, and I don't know why. Praise the Lord for victory over um, our technology. Hallelujah. All right. So 
be doers of the word. Simply put, if you're, if, if we're going to walk out in faith, <coughs> we got to be doers of the word. Hallelujah. Well, I believe in prosperity. Then tithe. That's an Old Testament principle. Did you know Hebrews says that there he receiveth the tithe, talking about Jesus, talking about the current present day ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ? A to the men. It's not in the New Testament. Last I checked, Hebrews is. Well, I'm under grace. I'm going to get blessed anyway. No. You tithe. And by it being a New Testament, it takes the Old Testament teaching on tithing and enforces it as a New Testament doctrine. Thank you for your enthusiasm. All right. Do I get any enthusiastic responses out there? Hallelujah. Um, so be doers of the word. Secondly, in seeing the answer, we must keep our minds on the answer and not the problem. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, Joshua chapter 1. You know, there, there, we get we we come up with stuff. All oh, New Testament, Old Testament to the Jews. We don't read any of that. Then why did Hebrews say that the things uh, the, the the things there were given as our as an example to us? King James uses the word "example." This means example to us. They are examples to us. Hallelujah. I mean, if it didn't mean things, just tear the Old Testament, throw it away. And say that's not Bible. It is. I said, it's still the word of God. Things are superseded in the New Testament. <clears throat> the Levitical priesthood has been superseded by the, the priesthood of Christ, who is the priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay. The law of love supersedes the law of, you know, um, vengeance. You know, um, you, you smite one on sheep, you, you know, that kind of thing. All the things, that, you know, that, we, that were there, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I say unto you, Jesus did. He superseded that. But where it's not superseded or negated by a, by a New Testament passage or scripture, it's still in force. In other words, God still hates sin. He loves the sinner. That's why Jesus came. For God so loved the world in their fallen state. While we were uh, altogether dead in our trespasses and sins. He quickened us together with Christ, raised us up together with Christ, and made us sit together in heavenly places. Okay? Joshua 1.8 <coughs> says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Now, a number of years ago, there was a teaching. Um, this guy was, he was anti-word of faith, didn't like the word of faith people. Um, looked like he'd been baptized in vinegar and lemon juice all at the same time. I mean, he was just so full of um, non-joy, it, 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 it would hurt you to watch him. And he came along and said, you know, meditating is an Eastern, is a, is a Eastern practice and not for the church. Well, hate to tell you, pal, the Bible's an Eastern book. It was not written to the Western mind. It was written to the Eastern mind. So take that one away. And the Bible tells us to meditate. <coughs> this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. The word meditate literally means to mutter. To rehearse, to repeat, to speak over to yourself. Uh, amen. And um, so we're to meditate the word. Now, I don't mean getting in a transcendental meditation pose and, you know, with your feet wrapped around the back of your neck and biting your toenails and groaning with uh, and play, playing incense and all this. We're talking about letting your mind and using your mouth as, as a communication device to repeat the word of God as a form of meditating of rehearsing before you listening to yourself hearing the word of god come out of your own mouth we are to meditate the word of god 
Hallelujah. Why? Because it keeps our eyes on the answer and not the problem. As long as we keep our eyes on the problem more than we do the answer, we're going to lose. So what do we do? We keep the word before us. We keep the, the, the greatness of God before us, not the greatness of the problem. <clears throat> we keep the all-sufficiency of God before us and not the lack that we face in the problem. Hallelujah. That we always have an all sufficiency in all things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. Always have an all sufficiency in all things. What all sufficiency? All sufficiency from God. It comes from God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He, he is our sufficiency. He's more than enough. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Hold on just a second. pastor is drinking Starbucks. They say it's a miracle. Mr. Anti bad coffee too, cost too much person. Hallelujah. Isaiah 6, chapter 26 verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Hallelujah. See when we keep our mind meditating in the word, when we keep our mind stayed or focused on God don't let the word depart out of our mouth. Amen. Keep the word before us. Hallelujah. My son, attend to my words and climb down here into my sayings. Praise God. When we do that, then we're going to see, we'll see the word, what the Bible says. And see, that keeps our faith focused. Faith, in, it wraps itself around and possesses the answer as we keep the word before us. Hallelujah. You cannot finish a race unless you know what the goal and where the goal is. If you're running, they, they put the tape up on the last leg. Remember, hope can never finish because hope has to pass the baton. But after that last leg gets that, they put the, they put the tape across the finish line. And as those guys are running, they're looking at that tape. They're not looking to see who's three lanes behind them because when they look back, they lose steps and can get passed by the other competitors. No, they focus on that line, and they run with everything they've got, and they give it all they have. Hallelujah. Keeping their eyes fixed. So my son, attend to my words and climb down the ear into my saying, let not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are health. They are life to all that find them. And medicine to all their flesh. Life to all that find them. Joshua, the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate. Thou shalt mutter there in day and night. Why? That thou mayest observe to do. Remember, be doers of the word. All that is uh, according to all that is written therein. All. All. Amen. In the New Testament, there are more doctrines than uh, our narratives. There are more doctrines in the New Testament than faith. There are more doctrines than grace. There's more doctrines than repentance. There's more doctrines than heaven. Hello. So we're to keep the whole counsel of the Word of God. There's more doctrine than love. Can you say glory? We're to, be, we're to keep all of it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then <clears throat> Isaiah again says, that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. It's something, there's, there's such a value to keeping our mind. Remember in the armor of God that the uh, helmet is the helmet of salvation. I remember we're to put the word to put, what is that? Save. Remember James says, receive with meekness the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul, your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions. It's so important that we keep the word of God in our mind and keep stayed on him and not let it depart from our eyes so that we're able to see 
the answer. Our eyes on the finish line. We possess it in our heart. We possess it. And that's the thing. When you're running that race, you possess that finish line. It's mine. It's mine. I'm going because I possess that finish line. And nothing's going to stop me from getting there. Because faith has it. Faith sees itself crossing the line. Faith sees itself, you know, breaking the tape. Glory to God. <coughs> and possessing the victory. Praise God. Before it ever happens. Hallelujah. Faith will contradict circumstances. Let me say that again. Faith will contradict circumstances. You see, the circumstances say you're going to have to die because you have cancer. That's what the circumstances say. That's what the doctors have said. That's what the tests have said. That's what uh, you know, medical science and all of its um, years of experience and practice say. But the Bible, you'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. By his stripes ye were healed. Hallelujah. Can you say glory to God? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. And forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Amen. So faith. Remember now hope's going to start you. Hope's going to look at that word and get, get the thing going. And then it's going to hand it off to faith and say, now faith, you go finish it. You possess it. You take it. And you get it. And faith will contradict the circumstances. Well, what happens with people? And why don't they contradict the circumstances? Why don't they... Why, why aren't they doing it? Because if you listen to them talk, you'll find out. Most of the time. Unless they're trying to put on the good, good show and say what you, they think you want them to say. You know, I see people talk, tell family members, don't say that, don't say that. And, and just to, ple to, to placate them, they'll try to say the right thing when they're not there or when they're there. And they go right back to saying what they normally say. Uh, as soon as they're gone. <clears throat> talk with people. I, I've talked with people who were in, in different difficult situations. And and when you talk to them, you ask them a question. And you say, are you, when we pray, are you going to be healed? Well, I sure hope so. Or then you come and say, how you doing? We've prayed for you, and the, you know we're believing Jesus. And they say, "I sure hope so, Pastor." <coughs> or they even get up to where they think they've got the answer. Well, one of these days, you know, the Lord's going to heal me. Yeah. And um, they never quite get to faith. They've never let hope pass the baton to the finisher. No. You think wrong when you're believing uh, and that makes your believing wrong. And if your believing is wrong, then your talking will be wrong. And if your talking is wrong, you'll be defeated. So it starts with getting your thinking right. So you think right. So you believe going to be right. Hallelujah. And then when your believing is right, you're talking to be right. And when your thinking is right, your believing is right, your talking is right, then you'll get the right answer. Victory. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So faith will contradict. Let, let's look over into uh, <coughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You see, the, the word of God is eternal. That circumstance is temporal. That word temporal uh, literally means to be subject to change. It's changeable. It is not fixed. It is not settled. 
It's not permanent. It's temporal. It's temporary. It's a temporary thing. It's not a permanent thing. It's a temporary thing. Hallelujah. But the word of God, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Praise God. I said praise God. So the word cannot change. So when the unchangeable comes in contact with the changeable, guess what happens? The changeable changes. Hallelujah. Has to be. Because faith contradicts circumstances. Who against hope believed in hope or um, without any basis for hope, hopefully believed. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Romans chapter 4, Abraham. Weymouth translation. Or actually 20th century. 20th century New Testament. We have to keep our thinking right. So that goes back to all this from Proverbs, James, Joshua, Isaiah, keeping our mind on the Lord, keeping our mind on his word so that we see what the word declares about every circumstance. Hallelujah. And we allow it to keep us fixated on the answer and not on the problem. Now, uh, I remember, uh, it's particularly when we were younger, um, we'd go to the nursing home and we'd, uh, they had, we had Sunday afternoon things where we'd go to the nursing home and um, share and, you know, minister to the elderly in the nursing home. Remember that, Janie? Go with Seth Jones and that, that crew. And um, praise the Lord. And, um, you know, some older people, they just aren't happy unless they can talk about the rheumatoid or their bursitis or their ailments. Because it's become who they, they're so focused on it. That's all they can talk about. And bless their heart. I understand they want to, they want to talk to somebody. They want to have a conversation with somebody and um, they want to be able to share. But, but they're so but they share what they're fixated on. They're fixated on that problem. All the time. And it gives them something to talk about. Hallelujah. Not to that fact they have something to talk about. But the word of God says to be fixated on the word. So you can talk about the word. And talk the word and live the word, think the word, do the word, be doers of the word. Remember? So that we begin to contradict circumstances with our talking. Not that we're denying that the circumstances exist. We're just saying there's a higher power and a higher reality that will supersede it. It's not changeable. That will change the current reality to align itself with the eternal reality. What we're doing is we're taking, we're, we're bringing eternal reality into the realm of fallen reality and enforcing eternity onto that circumstance. God's eternity. Hallelujah. Where that circumstance has to acquiesce to the higher authority of God's provisions, promises of heaven. This is Isaiah. No, not Isaiah. Deuteronomy. Experiencing days of heaven on the earth. We're... How do you experience days of heaven? You bring the realities of the eternity and enforce it on the temporary to be changed to eventually be done away with reality of a fallen realm. It must acquiesce <clears throat> and yield to the truth and the reality of eternity of heaven. When brought into play and brought into force through faith of the believer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So faith is saying about oneself what God's word says about you. Faith is saying about yourself what God's word says about you. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 Um I know we were just in 2 Corinthians 4.14. Let's run over to Hebrews. Hebrews. 
Seeing then we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Now the word profession is, the same, is also translated confession. Um, same word translated both ways, profession, confession. Uh, it means to say the same thing as. It literally means to say the same thing as. To say what God says about you and your or your circumstance. That's the higher reality. That is eternity being enforced on a changeable realm by an unchangeable reality. Hallelujah. Are you here? You gone home? Well, it's a joke. Y'all are at home. Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> so we are to say the same thing as we're to speak the same truth as we're to believe and act on though at that the same way. Look, if you will, into Mark's gospel, the 11th chapter. Mark 11. And we'll look at, um, let's pick up verse 12 because this, this is important to the whole story. <clears throat> and on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily, um, by chance, you know, or perchance, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of the figs was not yet. Now, when a fig tree had leaves, it's supposed to have had figs. That's just how they grow there. It was saying, I have figs. So gee, now, even though he knew it was out of season, it's supposed to have figs because it had leaves. Anybody ever planted a garden and got something out of season? You know, strawberries came up early. Okay. Uh, well, this fig tree came out early and said, I got figs. Jesus goes there because he's hungry. He wants something to eat. He gets there. Nothing there. And um, he answered it. See, it spoke to him. He answered it. Fig tree said, by its leaves, I've got figs. Got there, they weren't there. Jesus said, and then Jesus spoke to it. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter. Forever. And his disciples heard it. Now, there goes the silent thing. You know, I have silent prayer. Not even meditation is silent. Meditation is to mutter, to speak to yourself. You don't have to be loud, but it's still speaking it to yourself. If, you, if you're not saying it, you're thinking. Hello? You're not meditating. And um, so they go into Jerusalem. They run the money changers out, go back out, and then um, verse... 21, verse 20, what do, 19. And when evening has come, they went out of the city. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou curses, wither away. And Jesus answering said, Have faith in God. Now, he did not stop and go, I am the son of God. I am all powerful. Fig trees must obey me. And I cursed it and it died because I'm God's son. I'm the second person of the Godhead. This proves to you that I am deity. It's not what he said. Now that's how a lot of church world reads it. That's not what he said. As a matter of fact, what he basically comes out and says, you can do the same thing. And that's, that's what we'll find out here. He said, have faith in God, or uh, margins in many Bibles will say, have the faith of God, or the God kind of faith. For verily, now verily is an old English word translating uh, this, the Greek word here. It, it means a solemn oath. To swear. Okay? But to give a solemn oath. So Jesus gives a solemn oath. In other words, this isn't flippant, this isn't light. I'm not just saying this off the cuff. I give you a solemn oath. And I say unto you that whosoever shall say, 
So in other words, now what he's going to make sure is we understand is this is not an event that only the master can fulfill or do. This was an action of faith. Speaking words of authority and power. Glory to God. For verily I say unto you, the whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. So Jesus teaches here that this wasn't limited to him. It wasn't even limited to the, um, to the 12 apostles or 12 disciples at the time or the early church. He said, whosoever. This is a function of the believer to live by faith, <clears throat> to speak faith, and have the circumstances change and obey it. Amen? So it says, if you say to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe. What? Believe what you say comes and shall come to pass. See, faith, faith that just saying it's not enough. Rehearsing words from other people are not enough. Now, I know, listen, and, and, and I don't, I'm not trying to be critical. And I just want to make clarity. We get these books on confession. You know, here's a daily confession. Make this daily confession, da 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 What we're really doing is a daily meditation. Because until you believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth, it's not faith. So they're great. I mean, they're, I mean they're, you know, look at uh, Jermaine Copeland's uh, book of confessions. Charles Capps got books on confessions. Um, Brother Hagen's um, uh, devotionals have a confession at the end. They're all great, but what they really are, and, we, and for lack of a better term, we call them a confession, but really they're a spoken meditation until when we say it, we believe it. Amen. Until we say it and believe it. Up until then, we're meditating it. We're, we're, we're meditating the word. We're speaking the word. By speaking those, those, those phrases, those paragraphs, those professions of... Um, I'm trying, I'm trying to use a different word than confession. See, it's hard to, in the English language, to use the right word. Um, but they are written meditations for the purpose of developing or producing faith in the Word of God so that we can speak it because we believe it. You remember the spirit of faith? As it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Amen. Now, if you don't believe it and you're speaking it, keep doing it. The, the more the merrier. Until it takes root in you and you you are so convinced. Oh, that is true. I believe. I be then you speak it. Then it becomes, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. And what did it say? We then have in the same spirit of faith. Glory to God. But shall I believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass? He'll have whatsoever they saith. He saith. Therefore, because of this reality, because of this truth, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when you pray, when you ask for them, believe that ye receive them, and you shall have them. So the basis becomes believing what you say. And for the belief, it doesn't mean, you know, you're believing for somebody else's wife or house or kids or car or whatever. What the word promises you. Faith begins where the will of God is known. And the word of God is the will of God. Hello. The word of God is the will of God. You're not going to get it anywhere else. It only comes out of the word. Only out of the word. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. You can't get it anywhere else. Amen. And so, 
it brings us into this place of reality. It brings us into this place where faith leaps over the circumstances. Faith apprehends the answer. Glory to God. Faith says, I will not be denied. Glory to God. I will receive. Hallelujah. And I quoted you earlier. I got ahead of myself. For, uh, second, uh, second Corinthians 4, 13. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as written, I have believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So faith sees the answer. Faith possesses the answer. And faith says, I have it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, uh, next week we'll talk about faith versus feelings. <laughs> Praise God. That, that gets always, always gets good. <clears throat> um, our feelings can be finicky. I mean, you're feeling, you, one second, you know, and I always say this, I'll just kind of give you a, 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 a pre, pre, uh, precessor. That's probably not the right word. Um, but, you know, I, I remember in high school, guys and girls would be dating, and one day they, they're in love, then they break up, next day they hate each other. I mean, there's rumors all over the school about how evil and ugly the other one was and all this stuff. And two days before that, they were so syrupy, you could, you could uh, put it on pancakes. I mean, it was, they, uh, they just didn't love, they, I love you. And then they break up, and ooh, it was nasty. See, feelings can be finicky. It can be in love one minute, and it can be crazy the next. Hallelujah. All right, so next week we'll pick that up. Let's go ahead and receive our offering. Hallelujah. If you need to give uh, electronically, go ahead and get your offering made with uh, uh, the Cash App or with PayPal and designate the Faith and Victory Church. Um, if you are in those, that information just popped up on your screen. And if you um, um, are, are specifying anything like building fund or whatever, just put that in your memo. We'll make sure it gets to the right place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Glory to God. As you get those ready, hold it up before the Lord and declare, hallelujah, his word is true. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the tithe and for the offering. Thank you the people are blessed as they give and sow seed into the kingdom of God, that you open unto them the windows of heaven and empty out of them blessings they don't have room enough to receive, that they may be a delightsome land that they many, lend to many and don't borrow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that the devourer is rebuked. For their sake, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. <clears throat> so glad you could join us tonight. Remember to be with us on Sunday at 1230, alive and in person. We'd love to see you in person. Glory to God. Had a strong service this last week, uh, talking on ministering on Pentecost Sunday. And we're going to continue ministering on the uh, infilling baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we, we're not done with that yet, so we're going to continue along those lines. Glory to God. Until we meet again, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. We love you. Look forward to seeing you again. Good night from Faith and Victory Church online.